It's a spicy meat the ball. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah.
Eat good, live well, stay true. What is going on, you guys? Very excited for this one today. Meatball sandwich, sub, whatever you want to call it. We've got some delicious balsamic and sweet onion kettle cooked chips with, of course, the next level jalapeno sour cream that you saw come together in that cooking segment. Hope you guys enjoyed that sort of relaxing ASMR type uh, cooking segment that led to this delicious monstrosity of a situation. As you can see, we're representing Italy with the red, green, and white. Got to do the home colors if you're doing the home sandwich, you know what I mean? Hopefully I did right by Italy to some degree with this, cooking it, coming together. Just my own little riff take on the situation. But I got to say, I think it's going to be fire. Can't wait to get into it. Really, really hungry. I've been, you know, just it's taking a little while to get this done. So um, let's get into this. Also, we're going to tell you the story of the first time me, my stepbrothers, my friends all got caught by my parents uh, getting stoned or being stoned and sort of just the repercussions and how everybody handled it individually different and just kind of the whole, you know, that first time of just like, uh, we're busted, you know? All right, so I think first things first, a bite, obviously. Up close, Percy. Got that nice Italian roll. Closes up perfectly. Let's get to getting this. Gotta get to the meatballs. Mm, that mozzarella. For those of you who are gonna get at me about there being enough sauce, I don't like too, too much marinara. I like just so it's there, just enough. I don't want it drowning in it. Okay. Let's tell you a story. And work on these chips. So me and my boys started smoking in grade nine. And by my boys, I mean me and my stepbrothers and my my couple best friends. But because me and my stepbrothers are all like we're either one year apart or the exact same age. We all kind of hung out together with each other's friends because we all had the kind of the same friends really because we were all in the same high school and we were all the same age so we just we all kind of ran with the same people and so we had been smoking pretty consistently for grade nine and we were in grade 10 at this point. And so like our, pretty much our ritual was we would invite, invite our boys over to our house on the weekends <clears throat> and We would like, we had the basement to watch movies, play computer games, stuff like that. And, um, you know, our parents were cool with us having friends over, watching a movie together, whatever, whatever. So that was our whole shtick is like we used to walk to the movie store back when you can rent movies, rent VHSs. It's crazy how much times have changed, but we used to walk to the movie store and that would be kind of our, our excuse to be able to leave the house, stop in a back alley, get between like two sheds, fire up a couple birdies and just, you know, get on a level. And so, you 
we have been doing that for a year, year and a half, you know, pulling it off, no repercussions. Somehow our parents just never caught on. So one night, a night like any other, a Friday night like any other, we do our ritual, grab our like 20 piece bag at school. We're all excited. My, my boys come over after school we're waiting for nightfall to like go rent our movies, get our snacks, fire up, you know, and get on our level. I think I'm gonna take it to a to a sauce level. <laughs> yes. Oh wow, I just got hit with one of those fresh basil leaves. That's the ticket right there, holy crap. Mm, that was a monster cheesy bite. So anyways, we're in my basement, we like do our thing. We always like roll up. Very much ritualistic. Get our birds ready. To walk to the movie store. So we do that, we head out. Go to the normal burn spot. burn one up then go rent movies and get snacks because we always wanted to smoke a little bit first so that a picking out a movie was hilarious and b by the time you got home you're like settled into your stoned and like you know maybe like some excess sense all that stuff has kind of dissipated a little bit top stoner tip so did that Get back home, go down. There was me, my two stepbrothers, and our two buddies. Actually, the one of them is uh, my stepbrother's cousin. But, like, everybody's family's intertwined. Like, we all, all the parents know each other and shit. Like, um, they all grew up together and stuff like that. So, our parents all know each other. Anyways, turn the lights off, it's all dark, put on the movies, movie, and uh, like halfway through the movie, I guess my dad came down to like go to the laundry machine or whatever, and I think he caught a whiff, because my dad, you know, was a teenager once too, so he knows what's up. So I think he caught a whiff and so in that moment he like flicked the lights on just to like he kind of just like said like hey what's up or whatever but he flipped the lights on and like looked at us and we're all just like so like hey so like just watching this movie and we all have like cherry tomato eyes like just zombied out so baked and you know you're all nervous too you're like you don't want to get caught so you don't really say too much and you're all like awkward he doesn't say anything, he just pops the lights back off.
goes upstairs. I don't know this till later, but in that moment, he went and he like he goes to my stepmom, and he's like, "All of the kids downstairs in the basement right now are stoned out of their trees." And my stepmom is in like disbelief. She's like, "No way! Like, no, we would know." They're too young for that. Whatever, whatever. So, so like twenty minutes later, my mom or my stepmom comes down, does the exact same thing, flips the lights on, looks at us, says "Hey" or whatever. We're like, "Okay, that's a bit fishy," but. Didn't think too much of it. Just because we had gotten away with it so many times and like, you know, when you have, you just feel confident and you get cocky and shit. So anyways, they don't say anything. My dad would tell me later that she came upstairs and was like, oh my God, you're right. They are completely blasted. We have six blasted kids in our basement right now so they're trying to figure out what like how they're gonna handle it like because you know they're like are we gonna have to contact the parents of the other two how are we individually gonna parent this because my parents were like believers in though we were like a blended family my dad's like i'll deal with my kids the way i deal with them you deal with yours and we'll keep it separate so So the next day, parents were like out of the house. My dad works like four on, four off kind of thing. So he was at work. Stepmom was out of the house, like doing whatever, shopping and whatever she does. And uh, my sister is like in the middle of the afternoon. She's like, yo, like, did you, you guys got super baked last night? And I was like, yeah, for sure. Like, that's what we do all, <laughs> every Friday or on the weekends. And she's like, yeah, uh, you guys are totally busted. Like, dad and and like our stepmom like she they know like they know that you guys are super baked and i think they plan on like calling the parents and you know and um and then in that moment like you have your first like oh crap oh crap oh crap oh crap oh crap oh crap like we're going caught smoking weed like oh my god my life is over because like weed scene especially back then weed was so like weed right like it's not like it is now Pickled jalapeno bite. So my friends had slept over. I report back to everybody. I'm like, yo, we're busted. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, parents know that's whether they checked on us the lights last night. Like, we are busted. They're planning on calling your parents, your parents, your parents, whatever. And um, so we're all just kind of freaking out. And my one friend's like, oh, man, like, my parents came off, find out, like, he's like, okay, I'm going to call my sister, my older sister, and make sure she's at the phone, intercept the call, pretend to be my mom. Because his older sister actually, like, we had gotten stoned with her a bunch, too. She, like, introduced us to smoking weed a little bit. And, uh, so my buddy here, his, his sister up, she's like, yeah, no problem. Obviously she's like, I've never been busted by our parents. Like I can't, you know, this is going to raise suspicion on me and shit too. So she's like, I'll intercept the call, pretend to be mom. She does that. Now the other dude was the cousin of my stepbrother. So like his parents were immediately contacted through everybody's like like my stepbrother's dad that's their their uncle like his brother so everybody all the parents like found out except for my one buddy my stepmom called and was like asked for mrs kelly and 
the sister's like, yes, this is Mrs. Kelly. Oh my God, that's, we'll, we'll have to deal with this. I, this is unbelievable, you know, like the whole shtick. So my buddy got away with it for a while until uh, the parents of like the cousin, they were all at like a dinner party. And they were like talking like, so how did you handle your son? They said his name, but I'm not going to say it on here because I don't want to. But they're like, how did you handle on so-and-so uh, with the smoking weed incident? What like is he how did you reprimand like is he done smoking now like did you ed educate him about like the harms of weed and drugs and shit and the parents were like what are you talking about <laughs> so they had a whole rundown of what happened so when so months later when it all came out like he got an extra shit because and his sister because like they posed and pretended to be that and then they're finding out about smoking weed all that stuff the funniest thing on my end was like like I said because my stepbrothers parents decided that they would parent us differently like like separately The parents reacted so ridiculous. They <laughs> they made them go to like this like month long like twice a week like drug and addiction education and counseling. Look at my hand. Wow, this bottle is rubbing off on my hand. That's not good. Uh, yeah, so they made them go to this like drug education and counseling like program at this hospital to educate them about weed and like substance abuse and the pitfalls of drugs and alcohol and stuff like that and I was just like oh my god that's too much so they had to do that. Of course, right after, like during it, we're still smoking weed at school. Like, it didn't stop anybody from doing anything. My dad just like sat me down and just had like a talk with me. He's just like, you know, it's not smart to do that. You know, it's not the best choice. It'll just make you like lazy and stuff like that. But he was more like, I know what it's like to be a teenager. I get that these things are around you and you're going to probably try stuff. And he's like, I don't want it done in my house, around my house. He's like, if you're going to, if you're going to do it, like I can't stop you, but just don't bring it around my house. Don't do it in my house. Don't be stoned in my house. And this is me just warning you now. It's probably a good idea just to not do it. Because I could, you know. It could become problematic in your life. So my dad took a more level-headed approach. In sort of just like talking to me about it. And my mom. 
was never like she already knew that I smoked weed and was like, if you're gonna smoke weed, I'd rather you do it at my house. I'd rather you be somewhere than where you're stoned and I like know like what's happening, who you're hanging out with, and that you're just like kind of stoned and watching a movie with your friends. Like it's not that big of a deal. My mom's only thing was like, don't let it become like a daily habit and let it like take over your life. Which it was a daily habit for till I was pretty old. Definitely all the way through high school up until maybe like 19, 20. So it was pretty funny. It was just like when you first get caught, like the stress level, like you're just like just the anxiety, your heart's like beating. You're like, oh no, like you just, you really think you're like 15 years old. You're like, my life is over. My parents are going to kill me. But it's, I don't know, it's funny how life works. Because as time goes on, like eventually you become, you get old enough, you become friends with your parents because you're an adult. And then you come to find out all this like shit about your parents that you didn't know. Like they'll tell you about smoking weed and stuff. And then, it was even like, I want to say like a few summers ago, we were sitting around uh, the bo- a campfire with my dad. We were all drinking, and my one stepbrother, he like, he's still like a heavy smoker. He busted out a blunt and was like passing it around, and my dad hit the blunt just for like whatever old time's sake, and my dad hasn't smoked like that new, like that 20, the 2000s weed, you know what I mean? He used to smoke some 70s stuff, like. He, we looked at him at one point, we're like, are you, like, going to bed soon or anything there, bud? Like, are you good? And he's like, he just looked at us, because he's been drunk, and then he hit the weed, and he's like, he's like, if I knew where my bed was, or I could move right now, I'd have been gone two hours ago. And we just died laughing, because, like, he was just so completely stoned that he couldn't even, like, function. He's like, that is not the same weed that we used to smoke back in our day. (laughs) That is craziness. So, hope you guys enjoyed that story. Uh, (laughs) This was incredibly delicious. And, yeah, I'm just like in awe and how good that was. Uh, Until the next one, though. Eat good, live well, stay true.